Hey, what's up everybody? Today's video, we're gonna talk about Windows failover clustering and how to fix long ESXi boot times. So if you're experienced in this, stick around and I'll show you how to go from this to this. So before we jump into the lab, it's best to talk about the Windows failover cluster design. As you can see here, we have two nodes, SQL node one, SQL node two. Both nodes are participating in the Windows failover clustering and both nodes have a public network as well as a private network. Public network is for the applications to access the database, while the private network is for heartbeat traffic. And both nodes have 12 physical RDMs attached to them, and node one is sitting on ESXi 06, while node two is sitting on ESXi 07. Let me pull up the console for node one. So I have the Windows Failover Cluster Manager open. As you can see here, we have two nodes, node one and node two participating in the cluster. And if I click on roles here, you can see the SQL Server roles currently running and node two is the current owner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the owner to node one by right clicking, select move, best possible node. So what this is gonna do is gonna take the disks offline for node two and switch them over to node one. As you can see, the disks are now online. So now I can go ahead and shut down node two. And once node two is shut down, we'll go ahead and reboot ESXi 07 so we can see how long it takes to boot up. All right, node two is shut down. We'll pull up the console for ESXi 07 and we'll go ahead and shut this host down or restart it actually. And once this host begins rebooting, I'm gonna pull up the clock here and we'll go ahead and kick off the stopwatch once it reboots. All right, so I'll kick off the timer here We'll let the host boot up. Okay, so what you're gonna notice here is gonna sit here at this particular VMW underscore VAIP underscore CX loaded successfully. It's gonna sit here for quite a while. If I press Alt F12, we can pull up the VM kernel logs. And we can see it's currently on LUN 110 right here. The ESXi host is attempting to examine this LUN as you can see here, it's giving us an error status of D colon 0x18. And this typically means that there's an iSCSI reservation issue. We can see down below here, now it's on LUN 109, and we just experienced the same error message. So what the host is trying to do is trying to examine all the LUNs that it sees. And when it's hitting the Windows failover clustering LUNs, it's running into this reservation conflict because node one currently has a lock on all LUNs attached to it. So when the ESXi host attempts to examine these LUNs, it's gonna get this conflict error and then it's gonna time out and move on to the next LUN. So I'll go ahead and speed up the video here. And then once, it's, once the host is booted back up, I'll show you how to easily resolve this. All right, as you can see, the host finally booted up. Let's go ahead and minimize this, minimize this. Actually stop the clock. And we're gonna talk about a script here that's gonna go ahead and set the perennial reservations to true because by default it's set to false. The reason that the host is taking so long to boot up is because node one currently has a lock on all the LUNs associated with the Windows failover clustering. And when ESXi 07 boots up, it's trying to examine those LUNs and it can't because there's a lock on it from node one. So we get that iSCSI reservation error message and then it eventually times out and it goes through all the LUNs. It's that process there that's causing the long ESXi boot times. What we need to do is we need to figure out a way to tell ESXi hosts to go ahead and skip that. And we can do that using the perennially reserved property, which is located right here. So let me go ahead and load some of these variables. Go ahead and connect to vCenter, my credentials. And I'm gonna go ahead and highlight phase one and just run this commands here. So this first bit of information we're gonna get is just gonna tell us the LUNs associated with the Windows failover clustering VMs, as well as the host that they're on and the data store that those RDMs live on. So if I run the next bit of code here, this is gonna tell us the current status, if perennial reserved is enabled or not. As you can see here, this is not enabled, set to false. So to enable this, all we have to do is go down here to this phase two here. And this is saying that it's gonna set this to true. And we all we have to do is uncomment out this command. And this value here is gonna set this perennially reserved to true. So if I go ahead and run this again, it's a date. We're gonna go through and set each LUN on both hosts to true. And all I have to do now, go back to our ESXi 07. Go 
go ahead and restart this guest. And once it comes back up, we'll go ahead and initiate the stopwatch and we'll see how long it takes now. All right, we'll kick off the timer. As you can see, it took about a minute and a half for it to boot back up after setting perennially reserved to true. So to recap, if you're running a Windows failover server cluster, it's very important to enable perennially reserved on your LUNs associated with those clusters in order for your ES6i host to boot faster. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, click that like button and consider subscribing. See you in the next video.